Hickok 45 here with a Model 13 3 inch revolver, FBI revolver. Yes, you've maybe seen it already. You might have seen one stainless that looked a lot like it, right? And you might also know if you've been around a while, I've been seeking one of these, searching, not desperately, but I've had it on my radar for a lot of years. I, I love the Model 65, as you know, and I have uh, wanted one in blue. Didn't have to have it, of course, right? But this is the format that the FBI carried for about 10 years, from uh, like around 81, 80, 81, to early 90s. And there's some overlap and transitions, all that sort of thing. And not everybody had one right away. And there were a few other maybe choices. So, you know, that always always goes. But, you know, this was adopted by the FBI. This three inch bull barrel Model 13 Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. Okay. Non adjustable sights. You know, this is just, you know, if you know me, you know, this is just what the doctor ordered. So. I'm not enamored with it. I wasn't uh, looking for one. I don't love the Model 65 because the DEA carried that, another federal agency, and some FBI, as I understand, even that one. And I wasn't searching for this one because the FBI adopted it. Uh, I mean, it might be part of it, but it's because I love this format. Look at that, a three inch barrel. You know I like that. You know I like uh, fixed sights. You know I like K-frame revolvers, 357 Magnum, one of the most versatile chamberings you can imagine. So lots of reasons for me to like this revolver, and John found one for me Christmas. So I apologize, I'm just now getting around to doing a video with it, dedicated video with my new Model 13 FBI revolver. I don't like to put things off. Okay, that's been six, seven months, maybe eight, <laughs> but we got to it, didn't we? And before we shoot it, the help we get, can I put some slide, some 357 Magnum rounds under this and touch a couple off? Oh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, I, as I've said before, we, we do tend to uh, regard the FBI, notwithstanding a lot of the craziness in recent years, of course, but we tend to put a lot of stock in what uh, large federal agencies, even large state agencies, police agencies, various uh, whatever uh, services adopt and use and carry. Because they go through a fairly rigorous uh, adoption process, testing regimen, both ammo and firearms. Uh, even though you got politics involved, uh, pricing and all that, but still, they generally adopt pretty good stuff, okay? And so do I. <laughs> All right, we got magnums in this thing. Now, even though it's got a bull barrel, you know, it still uh, lets you know you're shooting magnum ammo. And just to prove that, one of my cats donated an empty kitty litter container <laughs> to the cause. <laughs> See what I mean? Let's try that orange two liter while we're at it. Yeah, blows them up, doesn't it? Not too bad. Let's see if it'll go through paper. Yeah, blew that one too. Let's hit the propane tank. No, let's hit the hog. We've got a magnum in here. We need to kill that hog. We got him. We got him twice. <laughs> Six rounds. Uh, I really don't understand how we have any FBI agents who survived uh, those years, uh, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, how did they survive? Carrying a six-shot revolver. Weren't all of them killed in shootouts? Didn't everybody know? Didn't all the bad guys know they were just carrying revolvers? Hmm, you ponder that, uh, viewers. How come they survived? Well, I'm sure a few didn't, right? But, uh, uh, it was the days when revolvers reigned, as you've heard me say before, the 70s and the 80s. And uh, so, uh, and of course, before that. So, you know, no one walked around, even the FBI agents in 1975, they were carrying Model 10s mostly, I think, maybe some Model 19s, 
uh, if you were an FBI agent, help me out. Although I've gotten a lot of input and heard from some of you, former agents, I don't know if I've heard from any current agents, but who carried these, these pistols, uh, revolvers. Uh, but they were carrying revolvers, 38 special ammo most of the time, okay? And they survived those years. So they were not thinking, oh my gosh, all I've got is a revolver in my holster, okay? They might've been carrying cross draw. As I was saying for John so rudely coughed, uh, agents weren't walking around with a six shot revolver thinking, oh my gosh, I hope I don't end up in a shootout. I am totally outgunned today. Uh, maybe occasionally, but generally speaking, yeah, you didn't really have that frame of mind. Uh, yeah, revolvers rule. Okay, and even today, you know, I, you know, if you know how to handle a firearm, uh, most people who carry a revolver, whether they're agents, and if any of those left carrying them, but or anybody, you're, you're not that worried about that capacity issue if you are proficient in the use of the firearm, whatever it is you have. Okay, but anyway, it was revolver days, and this was cool, uh, and you know what they carried was. Uh, Generally, one of the, the popular FBI loads was, I just happened to have something that's kind of like it. I don't know if they carried plus P back then. I think it was just standard loads, but it was 158 grain lead hollow point, something like this. And uh, I remember those days, I, people talking about that being the FBI load and you could find them. They were, I don't remember who loaded them back then, but you could find them, uh, lead hollow points. There weren't a lot of them around, but somebody loaded some, maybe it was federal, I don't, I don't recall. I remember buying a, a couple of boxes, uh, pretending to be an FBI agent. <laughs> but I thought, well, if the FBI carries it, it's probably a pretty good load. It looked wicked. It's lead, fairly soft, hollow point. Couldn't be all bad. Technology has gotten to the point with bullet, bullet technology to where it doesn't need to be soft lead to expand and do all the things we want them to do, right? So 38 Special. Let's see if one will reach out through the gong. Uh, well, let's see if I can hit the gong. I'm sure it'll reach out there. Have I shot this at a gong yet? Let me walk it up. Just can't. Oh, it turned around. Maybe I did hit it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really hear it, but I, I have my ears in. You don't. <laughs> but uh, when it turned around to face me more uh, perpendicular to me, I, I must have uh, hit it on that next to the last shot there and that last one. Okay. Uh, 38 special. I'm going to go double action out of the holster. I think I have one round left maybe. Maybe two. So hollow point. You would generally fire a double action, of course, with a defensive pistol. Pull it out and <laughs> like that. Even on that red plate, click. So people can't get used to that. Uh, that question comes up a lot. Maybe we do an FAQ on that sometime. I'm not an expert, but I know uh, you want to think double action defensively. So that was a key round, that, that, that round right there. And I, I've read that uh, they carried Model 10s, uh, a lot of the agents before that, 38 specials. And uh, they carried around like that. And even when they went to this revolver, the 357 Magnum, three inch, uh, you know, Model 13, in about 1990-91, they a lot of them still carried this. I think they had to qualify also with Magnum ammo, but a lot of them just carried this anyway. I guess if they felt like they needed the Magnum, they might put that in too. Some probably carried Magnum, but apparently they had the 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 go ahead to carry either one if they wanted. And before I go ahead and tell you any more lies, I want to thank SilencerCentral.com for their support of the channel. They're still not making revolver suppressors for some reason. We keep trying to talk them into it, but uh, we appreciate their support. Get you a suppressor, have it shipped right to the door once you're approved, okay? Uh, so, and I, you notice I've got a couple others. Like I said, the, the time frame on this was they were using, I, I think, maybe two or three different 38 Special revolvers, mainly the Model 10 version of that, fairly short barrel. They even went to a really, I think, a two and a half inch barrel, but the agents didn't like the short ejector rod to get ammo out and that kind of thing. So when they went to this in 1991, it was really popular and very well received from what I've read. 
Okay, uh, you got the heavy barrel to dampen the recoil to some extent, and uh, you know, nice sights for fixed sights, and you can handle the, the two cartridges, uh, powerful and less powerful. Just a nice, handy size, you know, really, and uh, it was very, very popular. And, and I've gone through that in a couple of videos on the 65. Be sure you look those up. Maybe I'll link to some of those. I talked about how that came about, and I'm not sure I remember it all now, but I know the, the uh, well, how was it? The Oklahoma State Police adopted the Model 65, you know, which you've seen in video. Uh, they wanted the stainless version, you know, of this. And they wanted this configuration. And the Kentucky, or not Kentucky, the New York State Police, they, they wanted this in, in blue. They wanted it in blue. I think, I forget exactly how it went, but there was training going at Quantico, you know, with FBI trains. And I think some of the, uh, maybe the Oklahoma State Police were there, or, or New York State Police, whatever. And so there was some crossover there, and they saw what each other was using. And so the FBI liked it, and they ended up with it. And I've had several people write me that were in the FBI, and somebody not all that long ago was telling me that they also, some of the agents carried the stainless, the 65, which I didn't know, uh, because I think it was mainly the uh, DEA that, that carried this, okay? So popular revolvers, you know, big agencies, you know, can carry anything, right? They got lots of our tax money. They can buy any <laughs> firearm they want. Here they're carrying a FUD gun. <laughs> So anyway, John got me this at Christmas. I'm just now uh, doing the video with it. I apologize. And you know, I've had this one for quite a while. Cut the hammer off. I really abused it, but great gun. And just to show you why we have all these out here. Now, John bought me this one. He, he knew they're hard to find. He found one, jumped on it. Well, wouldn't you know it, after he got this for me, and we shot it, and looked at it, he, he decided he really liked it. He found another one for himself. So there it is. Okay, he's got the Packmire uh, grips on his, which you know we, we all have the wood grips for these we put aside, but uh, these, uh, as I understand, uh, the FBI actually used these Packmire grips back in the day. Uh, some of them did. So we got we got two of these things. Yeah, you know? that's the way it is. And you can't find them, and then uh, they come in pairs. And I've looked at gun shows. Uh, you know, collector. You just, there's a guy who sets up at gun shows around here. I can't think of his name. He always has a lot of neat classic revolvers. He never has one of these. They're just hard to come by. I've asked him several times over the years. And then John also, well, I got this for John because uh, I found one of these. <laughs> Actually, before we got the uh, 13s, this is another 65. There's something wrong with this one. Uh, oh, yeah, it's got this weird spur on the hammer. That's, that's got to be a mistake, I guess. Smith and Wesson made. I don't know, cause mine, you know, doesn't have that. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? So uh, we're hopeless. We both have uh, 65s and uh, or a 65 and a, and a 13. So uh, there you go. I'm just converting John into being a fud at an early age, right? Not much over 30, and he's already a. <laughs> now he's like me. He likes all kinds of quality firearms and. Uh, you know, so uh, we try not to be gun bigots. Whatever is cool, we like it. What's fun to shoot. So, what else did I want to tell you about it? So, like I said, the, the stainless was made before, actually, the, the blue. The stainless, I think, came out in 72 and went to about 2004 or something. The 13, the blue, and that's the only difference in the 13 and 65 is this is blue. Uh, was like from 74 to the late 90s, maybe 98 or something like that. And the FBI adopted it in the early 90s, like, no, no, early 80s, like 80, 81. Yeah, I might have misspoken earlier on. I think I might have said it was uh, in the 90s. Uh, it was uh, in the early 80s that they adopted it. Yeah, and then they, they, they used it through about 90, 91. I believe that's the time frame. Okay. So, pretty cool, very versatile firearm, as we all know. Let's shoot some more Magnums. You want to? Uh, I mean, they're all the same gun. I could shoot them all, but this is about my 13, so I'll shoot it, get it good and dirty. They have a good double action. Smith usually does, and just is a wonderful firearm to shoot. Love it. I love it. Let's shoot some magnums at something. Let's throw a couple of these at the gong. Now I'm going to get my ears in tight. <laughs> mm. 
I'm not sure where I'm going. I have not shot this much, to tell you the truth. Boom. Let's shoot something a little closer. Yeah, really good shooter. Easy to hit with uh, and a pretty good sight picture, I'll have to say. Uh, I just have always been fond of it. Before I get too engrossed and before it starts raining, let me uh, see. Now again, they don't make these now. They just quit making them in like uh, like late 90s and then on the stainless, uh, I think 2004 or something like that. So they're only available on the kind of the collector's market, the, the used market. Um, but they're just uh, a, a really nice, and many of you can appreciate it because I know in the videos we've done on the 65, uh, there are people who just are like me. They just fawn over that Model 65. And uh, this is, I just thought I liked a blue one. Uh, not any difference, right? And I carry these. I carry that one, and I will carry this one. You notice this is the one, if you've seen the video, the last revolver I'd ever sell. This one won, okay? It was the last one. Let's put it back in the holster before we get rained on here. Go out here and shoot something. Like, whatever we see. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Bowling pin. Boom. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, if you have a firearm that fits your hand well, as I was talking about earlier, you know, you just got a revolver and you're a federal agent knocking on a door. You don't know what's on the other side of that door. Well, if you can't shoot and you don't have a cool head, having 17 rounds isn't necessarily gonna save you. If you've got a firearm that you had to use in defense and you can pull that thing out and you can take a big, you can hit what you need to hit quickly, that's the most important thing. It feels good to you, you know the trigger uh, and it's, it's just gonna work. Yeah, hard to beat, hard to beat. Let's shoot some more, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm trying to think uh, what else I was gonna share with you that is probably just a big bunch of bull, not even true. Uh, so yeah, I was gonna, the first one I ever saw, I was riding to a shooting match in the late 80s with some guys and one of them pulled one of these out. I wasn't familiar with it. It was like 87 probably and uh, and I said, what is that? Is it, he said, it's a Model 13, it's the FBI gun. And so that was when they were actually carrying them and it was adopted. So I thought that is pretty cool configuration. And that always stuck in my mind. And uh, yeah, and so when I came across that 65, I picked it up because that was the closest thing I could find. Well, basically the same thing, right? All right. There's a disc down there, it needs to be hit. <laughs> How could I neglect the cowboy? Let's shoot him double action. Yeah, took him out. Took him out. If, if you like revolvers, uh, I recommend you practice double action. It's fun, and it, uh, if you ever have one for defense, that's the way you'd want to shoot it. You're not going to fire it accidentally. Like that cowboy. You can hit what you need to hit and uh, they, they just feel good, they really do. So yeah, the old uh, Model 13. Now we have some videos on the, the basic 13 that has, it has a four inch barrel and uh, that was mine. I think I sold that to John, traded it. But, uh, it was a, uh, a full grip. This is a, now it's hard to tell with this on there, but it's a round butt grip. That's the difference. There's lots of Model 13s around, and even Model 65s that police have carried, security agents or whatever, ever, but they generally will have a four inch barrel. They do not have the round butt. Okay, that's the, the biggest difference. So that's what makes these kind of, not unique, but harder to come across, the round butt and the three inch bull barrel. That's uh, what makes them so desirable to me and, and a lot of people, okay? So that's the configuration. Uh, and if you really like these, uh, good luck finding one. Now, I mean, on auction sites, you can probably find them. 
you're not going to find them cheap. Sometimes they don't even show up on an auction site, uh, but uh, these won't, okay? This one won't for a long time because guess what? The guy that did the video, the last revolver I'd ever sell, the last 357 Magnum I'd ever sell, this one came out as the last one. And that was a tough choice. It could have been that one. It could have been some others. But uh, can I shoot it one more time before I let you go? Let's run some Magnums through it. All right. Just a good old revolver. Hard to beat. Uh, and this is also one of this configuration. If you just found one in the four inch, you'd be fine, of course. Uh, you couldn't pretend you're an FBI agent like I can. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's got enough weight to it with that bull barrel that, you know, someone who is an inexperienced shooter, you could put some light 38 specials in it and, you know, you get very, very little recoil at all. Work them up to magnums, right? You know, and since I've got a hog down there, I just feel like I need to shoot him. All right, where is he? There he is. Let's go double action. Boom. Yeah, cowboy. <laughs> yeah, there's some power there. It's probably empty since I shot six times, right? So these are not the uh, uh, 586 or 686. They don't hold seven. There's none that hold seven. Uh, I mean, physics is physics. You can't get another hole in there, can you? So uh, these are great revolvers for, in some ways, dispelling myths. You know, you don't have to have adjustable sights. You don't have a big gi have to have a big gigantic revolver to hit what you need to hit, and uh, and you can have fun. In in some ways, for a range gun, home defense revolver, a range revolver, and this caliber and chambering and all that, this might be about as small as I want to go uh, and you know and have fun with it I could shoot the I could shoot every uh, round I've got on the table here just just having fun plinking and so could you and you're not gonna hurt yourself with it you know you're not it's got enough weight got the rubber grips good grip and everything uh, just so it's a great defensive firearm and it's a great range gun so and it's got six empties in it you know how I know that's how I know uh, so anyway, the Model 13, that's probably enough uh, that I've uh, shared with you. And maybe I will link uh, to some of those earlier videos. Just uh, look them up if I don't, uh, if I'm too dumb to remember. You know, anything Model 65. And mostly Model 65 probably. Uh, uh, and probably some of the other Model 13 videos, the bigger 13 we had with the square butt and the 4-inch barrel. I talked about a lot of these things and, and how that, that adoption came about. And I, I really appreciate people writing me because I have heard from a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies, you know, on all lots of different firearms and just share their experience and whether they adopted it. I hear from somebody almost every day about a firearm uh, that they've carried, used, and how it was used in the department. And it's, it's kind of interesting. So uh, the Model 13 FBI, uh, I don't know what to call it. I mean, you call it the Smith & Wesson Model 13 3 inch. FBI revolver is kind of what I refer to it as because it's what they carried and uh, let's face it they they kind of make it famous if, if they what they carry I think they went to in the 90s they went to the SIG 220 did they maybe some of them 226 don't know it's like the Navy SEALs you know we all know not that an FBI agent is equal to a Navy SEAL not <laughs> implying that but we all know most of us what they carried they carried the what the P uh, the SIG P226 for a long time now I think they carry the Glock 19 we just know we keep up with with that like the Model 37 pump shotgun was used by the Los Angeles Police Department for a like, decade you know so these firearms become associated with certain agencies that that use them uh, the military they use this uh, automatic uh, pistol for a couple of well for a long time I forget what it was called 1911, yeah. So they become associated with uh, those adoptions. So it's kind of interesting. It really is. So uh, I'm not gonna quit rambling and let y'all go. So one of the best calibers you can shoot in a revolver and you can enjoy, very versatile, and a really nice package, no doubt about it. And it has a little bit of history, you know, associated with the FBI, so that's pretty cool. John and I really like them and we really enjoy them and uh, I think you would enjoy them too, but you ain't getting ours.
Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms, you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns uh, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.